Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about how to get a software engineering internship. My name is Kevin Wei. I've been a software engineering intern and I've gotten a few offers when I was in college. So I'm here to help share a few pieces of advice to help you land your engineering offer. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for new tech interview prep videos every week. Software engineering can be an incredibly rewarding career and getting an internship is the first step in that direction. Plus, you get many perks as an intern that full-timers don't. Companies want to convert interns into full-time engineers, so companies give interns really nice gifts like backpacks and jackets, they give you one-on-one -on -one time to talk to executives, and companies even organize intern-only events like private concerts with the top pop stars or all-expense-paid trips to Disney World. There's two steps to get your software engineering internship. First, you gotta get the interview, and second, you gotta pass the interview. So you're gonna wanna first create a resume, and you want one that shows rather than tells your technical competency. Let me give you an example. You wanna avoid telling your competency by saying you just participated in a hackathon. Instead, you wanna show your competency by mentioning the project that you built, the languages you used, and the impact you made, like maybe you identified some technical trade-off. And of course, if you won a prize in the hackathon, be sure to call that out in your resume. After you've written your resume, you'll want to get it in front of recruiters. You probably already have a few tech companies in mind, but try to cast as wide of a net as possible, especially early on in your career. Almost every industry needs software engineers, from startups like Instacart and Stripe, to finance like Visa or Goldman Sachs, to retail companies like Walmart, or entertainment companies like Disney. Basically, almost every company nowadays needs tech talent, and oftentimes, many of them will be hiring software engineering interns. When you're ready to apply, try to get a referral. For some companies, applying with a referral will guarantee that you'll get a human to look at your resume rather than just a bot that screens resumes for keywords. It makes sense. Thousands of students apply to internships, but only a subset of them will apply through a referral. And companies will see that if an existing employee is referring someone, it's reasonable to assume that most employees will only refer qualified applicants. So this helps companies reach out to only the applicants who are most likely to pass the interview rounds. We have another video on how to get the referral, so be sure to check that out if you want some tips. Now on a passing the interview. Great, so you've gotten referrals, you've applied to companies, and you have probably have a few interviews lined up. You're gonna wanna prep for your interviews, and there's two kinds of interviews you wanna prep for, behavioral and technical. For internships, the behavioral interview is usually one where the team will try to see if you're gonna be a good fit as a teammate. This means judging you on your ability to communicate, any past relevant experience you might have, as well as whether you exude positive energy. My advice here is to show that you're a good team player and try to have a few stories prepared around why you wanna be a software engineer, why you wanna work for the companies, and some stories about technical challenges that you've solved in the past. Now on a technical interviews. Other than behavioral interviews, you're gonna probably have a coding interview as well. This will probably come in the form of a take-home coding test or a live coding interview or both. The take-home test is one where you'll be able to complete a coding challenge on your own time and you'll probably be given some expectations ahead of time. Make sure you study data structures and algorithms and do several easy or medium lead code questions to prepare. Ensure that you're able to implement common data structures and know the trade-offs for each thing like item creation, removal, update, and deletion. When I was interviewing, the most common data structure I used were hash tables. So if you're short on time, probably try to prioritize some problems around that. And it would also be good to familiarize yourself with search and sorting algorithms as well. Once you're ready and on a day when you're well rested, set some time aside to do the take-home assignment. Make sure that your internet connection is reliable too if that's something you're gonna depend on. For the live coding interview, this is one done with an engineer that currently works at the company. They'll share a document with you and as you code, they'll be able to see what you're typing. Again, most companies will likely ask you easy or medium lead code questions and you should always give the naive solution first and then work towards a more optimal solution next. Use your best judgment. Maybe because you're time constrained, you can just tell your interviewer that a naive solution exists using some data structure and you'll want to proceed to implementing a more optimal solution. If you hear your interviewer pushing back and wanting you to implement the naive solution, 
just do that. Otherwise, feel free to jump right into the optimal solution. It also helps to give pseudocode first before coding. This way, if time runs out, at least your interviewer knows that you had some solution in mind. And as always, be prepared to share the time and space complexity of your solution. One question you might have is, is there a programming language that interviewers would prefer to see you use? In my experience, it doesn't really matter, but I suggest using one that's well known and one that you're less likely to make mistakes with. It also doesn't hurt to double check with your interviewer to see if they want to see your solution done in some specific language. More often than not, they'll let you pick as long as it's not some obscure coding language. And there you have it. You're now ready to get the software engineering interview and pass the interview. Thanks for watching. For more software engineering interview prep videos, hit that subscribe button and visit tryexponent.com. Good luck with your upcoming interviews.